Over the relatively long time that I've been doing this YouTube channel, I've done some fairly irresponsible and dare I say it, stupid things. I bought a very, very cheap V12 BMW 7 Series. I bought an Audi TT and a Volvo XC90 off Copart, sight unseen. I even, in an emergency situation in Wales once, bought a Mercedes CLK Cabriolet for £1,000 to get me and my wife home. But they say, don't they, that life ends once you stop progressing. And so I decided it was time I did something even more stupid. So have I bought a very high mileage, very old EV that I can plug into my home charger perhaps? Absolutely not. I bought something that sounds like this. And if you still haven't worked it out, well, let me give you a clue. So that's right, I have bought myself the cheapest Italian supercar that one can buy. Some might say the cheapest four-door Ferrari. This is, of course, a Maserati Quattroporte. There's only two words you need to describe a Maserati Quattroporte, and they are gorgeous. Ever since I first saw Jeremy Clarkson driving one of these on Top Gear, I've always wanted one. However, this car was very cheap. How cheap? 15,000? Lower. 10,000? Lower. 5,000? No, don't be silly. It was more than 5,000, but for well under 10,000 and just a little over five, this Maserati Quattroporte is now mine. But buying a very cheap car of any kind is extremely stupid, right? Let alone a car from an exclusive Italian brand made in the mid noughties Wrong. Because there are so many things you can do when buying a car like this to ensure you're being smart. First of all, making sure you buy a car that has extensive service history, lots of receipts for lots of work, and obtaining a good understanding of what the previous owners were like. And this car has precisely none of that. In fact, I have this one piece of paper, which is just to tell me that it has a valid MOT. Okay, well, never mind, because at least you can buy a car that has super low mileage. And that is exactly what I haven't done. This Maserati Quattroporte has over 110,000 miles on the clock. But if you do a history check on this car, you can tell that it's had a fine life. It doesn't come back and tell you that the car is a Cat S. It does, it, this car is a Cat S. But to be honest, with a car like this, sometimes higher mileage is better because it means some of that wear and tear maintenance that it's needed earlier in its life would have already been done. And although this car doesn't have the paperwork or the receipts to back it up, you can at least buy from a reputable dealer. I think you can see where this is going, can't you? Yes, my worst crime in this entire Maserati buying experience was probably the fact that I bought this car from some bloke that I've never met in Stockport. In fact, it's worse than that because I didn't even go to see this car before I bought it. I sent all the money and had this thing trailered to my house. So this is quite literally then the dumbest thing I have ever done. But last time I checked, I was driving a Maserati Quattroporte and that is extremely cool. It's got these gorgeous flappy paddles stuck to the steering column like a Ferrari and this Ferrari derived 4.2 litre V8 sounds absolutely sublime. sit really low down, lower down than I can ever remember sitting in any other saloon car. And the steering, although super light when maneuvering at lower speeds, stiffens up to be really sharp and sensitive as you get a bit faster. And because that engine is mounted so low and so far back within the bonnet, this thing feels really balanced. Certainly more balanced than any four door, almost two ton car should feel. But in all seriousness, with everything I've just told you about this car, surely this time I haven't gotten away with it. Surely this was a truly stupid purchase that's gonna come back and bite me in a big way. And I think unfortunately it might be.
There is a pretty big problem with this Maserati that I think I've found. And in next week's video, I'm gonna take the car to a Maserati specialist where, well, I think they might be confirming my suspicions. So if you want to see what happens with that, make sure you subscribe to the channel now so that you don't miss the video when it comes out next week. But if you can't wait to see what happens and you want to find out a day before everybody else, you can join my early access tier now on Patreon to see my videos 24 hours before they get published here on YouTube. Link is in the description. Now very quickly before I end this one, let's have a brief look at the rest of the car because I realise I haven't really told you what this specific one is. These Quattroportes came in many different shapes and sizes. So my Quattroporte is from 2007 and that's quite significant because in 2007 you could choose from two gearboxes. The Duo Select box which is infamous for being problematic and badly suited to a car like this or the ZF six speed which thankfully my car is it is a ZF six speed sport GT Maserati Quattroporte now in 2007 you could choose between an executive GT and a sport GT the executive GT would have probably been the one I'd prefer because it came with gorgeous wooden steering wheel wooden trim and lots of toys such as heated and cooled seats front and rear and massage however mine being the sport GT comes with these fantastically gangster 20 inch chrome alloys and loads and loads and loads of carbon fiber on the interior it's not completely neglected of toys in there. There is a rear blind. You can move the passenger front seat forwards and backwards from the back, and we still have heated seats. These were pretty well equipped to standard as well with things like cruise control, front and rear parking sensors. And of course, you've got that 4.2 litre Ferrari derived V8 under the bonnet, which is what this car certainly these days is all about. I think I've lucked out with the spec of this one as well because despite the fairly bland Grigio exterior, it does suit the car, but mainly because of the inside, we have a gorgeous leather caramel interior and I wouldn't have wanted any different interior color for my first Italian car. All in all, this thing has real presence. It's proper gangster, this Quattroporte. And to be honest, it's a big f you to those Tesla superchargers sitting right behind me. This thing, is really really cool but as i mentioned it's not all roses in fact anything but that i've withheld a fair amount of information from this first video because i want some further investigation before disclosing it to you so in the interest of that you'll have to wait for next week where i think unfortunately we are going to uncover some pretty major issues with this crash report so do stay tuned, make sure you subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Give this video a thumbs up, really important, if you like the Quattroporte content, because then I will make more of it. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one, hopefully very, very soon. Oh, sh I don't believe it. I actually can't believe this. I just drove this car for the video, like my first actual drive in it and I promised I wouldn't do this I promised this is this is a YouTube car this is not my daily driver I've still got the KN this is strictly for content for YouTube I've, ju I've, lit I've just fallen in love with it I, ha I love it I love it I love it oh. oh god I'm in for a world of pain oh yeah just very quickly if you guys were wondering the front plate uh, well, it literally fell off. This is the bit that clips onto the car to hold it in place and uh, yeah, it's not on the car anymore. So new bits and bobs and new plates have been ordered and hopefully next time you see this car on the channel, we'll be all proper and good with a front plate as well. Mm -hmm.